started this project and they, they basically handed me the responsibility of the audio for it, I started taking a look at uh, the concept art that was being developed and taking a look and seeing the new the sort of renaissance approach they wanted to bring in. And it became obvious pretty early on that this was the type of game that was a story-driven game. So at that point, I knew right away I'd made my first decision that the story needed to be the priority, it needed to be at the forefront. With all due respect, Major, I'll expect two security details waiting for us on the tarmac. In the first Deus Ex, I think because it was far more futuristic, it's a very electronic score. In this one, I think because it's 25 years earlier, it's a generation earlier, um, it's mechanical augmentation, so the music tries to express that. We decided to try using organic instruments to represent more of the human side, and then using electronic instruments to represent more of the augmentation side. It's a lot of acoustic drums, it's a lot of choir, it's strings. Because it's interactive, the music has to shift depending on what the player is doing. Especially in Deus Ex, where the player can play it stealth, or he can play it as an action game, or he can play it socially, the music has to be able to reflect all those different styles of gameplay. Combat is just insane. Making the weapon sounds is obviously the, uh, the thing everybody gets excited about because it's a lot of fun to make things go boom. We worked with the weapons designer. We went through tons of different sounds, blending all kinds of different weapon sounds, tweaking it. We take real sounds, but we blend these sounds with other stuff. Like, it's not just like three, four sounds blended together. It's like, like probably 25 sounds <laughs> all together. You have to feel the things like they're real. But in the same time, you like to get these things a little bit more than real. Hacking was a, was a fun part to do because it's kind of its own little battlefield in itself. It's you against the mainframe. And when you're hacking something, I want it to feel somewhat cerebral, but I also wanted to have that tension of like, okay, I can't afford to get caught here. We had a lot of ideas on how to, how to work the stealth side. We used distances to decide at what point we wanted to start hearing people. Someone's running. At what point did we want to start stressing the player out with the fact that they've got enemy guards approaching. And in the end, I think we found a recipe that worked really well and creates a really cool experience. We know someone's here. Keep looking. It's a heavy game. It's dense. There's a lot of story. There's a lot of conspiracy. There's a lot of characters in the game. That means the emphasis needs to be put on the people telling the story, and in this case, the actors. It is a time of great innovation technological advancement. The thing about playing Adam Jensen is tricky because as an actor, when you play anything like film, television, or, or stage, what you do is you um, justify everything the character does. You have to. I found your attack dog in the factoring labs. But with Jensen, I have to justify not only why he's doing one arc, but why he's doing hundreds of arcs. When I have the option to play as a good guy, to not kill anybody, to go through the game and, and knock people out and, and never get discovered, that's what I'll do. Because I feel like a good guy wouldn't go around killing everybody. If I kill somebody and I didn't mean to kill them, I'll go back to a previous save. And I'll be like, okay, no, I'm going through without killing them. To get the game immersive, I played it in a subtle way so that you can imprint your emotions onto the character. What are you talking about, Malik? What we needed was not so much music, as it was more emotional support for the story. So whatever environment we're in, if we're in Detroit or we're in Shanghai, is trying to bring elements of that environment into the music. Street musicians that may, you may hear walking down the street are all incorporated into the score as well. You have to give the, a special color to the game. You have to get the vibe of that city. It's not just ambience. We've also got sounds being triggered at different intervals as you walk because that's what makes it feel realistic. Hearing a window break in the distance as you walked a certain path. And what's cool is when you walk back the same way, it's not going to be the same sound. It's not baked in. We've got something else cooked up. Now you're sitting there going, okay, well, this feels like it's adapting to what I'm doing in the game. And ultimately, that's the illusion you want to create. My philosophy on, on good sound design, I've often compared it to 
to trying to send somebody into a deep hypnotic state and you're going down layers and levels of states and the better it's done, the more your brain starts to release and give in and let you go into that sort of uh, hypnotic state of playing the game.